In this video, we will show you how to use Google SketchUp to design a timber frame structure such as this picnic pavilion. As you can see, we have three bents. Each is a king post with wind braces and principal rafters supporting purlins that overhang the front and back by about two feet. By running the principal rafters beyond the posts, we create an overhang on the sides as well of about two feet in order to protect our posts from the weather. We've included curved braces. Our footprint is 12 feet wide by 16 feet long. Our roof pitch is 812. In order to start this, I highly recommend that you design one bent separately. Here I am with a blank screen using Google SketchUp. I'm going to start off by hitting Command 3 to look at it straight on and view the first quadrant. Using the rectangle tool, I'll draw a rectangle that is 12 feet wide by 9 feet tall. Zoom out a bit. Uh, now I'm going to work with my roof pitch. And since it's 12 feet wide, I'm only going to be going to the middle. is only 6 feet, so I'm going to need to go up 4 feet tall. So if I go 12 feet by 4 feet, then that midpoint connected to there should give me my roof pitch. And let's go ahead and throw a couple of posts in. They're going to be 108 tall by 8 inches. Another one on the other side. Again, 8 inches. We're going to need a midline. By using the pencil tool, I'll just draw a line straight down using my I want to go over um, three inches each side of the midline. Create a six by six. I'm going to come down six inches, place a point, and that's where I'm going to do my dropped tie beam, which is a six by eight. So I can make that. 8 inches. Um, and I'll go ahead and continue that straight up on each side. Let's go ahead and erase a few things we don't need here. We're going to need a parallel line for our rafters up eight inches. Same thing on the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line that goes quite a ways down on either side there. And then I'm going to have an overhang of, oh, let's make that. 24 inches. I'll continue this line through there. Um, and then from here straight down, coming over to the same side. Got my reference point, and when it's pink, I know I'm parallel. Go straight up. And let's go ahead and go from the midpoint over. Erasing a few things we don't need. Let's go ahead and start on the king post here. Using my guidelines to create the outside and erasing a 
again a few things I no longer need. And it's starting to look like a bent. Uh, last thing we need to do is decide where we want to start our wind braces on the king post. I'm going to come up six inches to give me enough wood to, uh, to make the mortise plenty strong enough. And I'm going to go ahead and use my protractor tool here to get a 45 degree line. I'd like those to be at 45 degrees. We'll do the same thing on the other side. 45 degrees. That will allow me to draw the first line. And then these are going to be um, three by five. So I would need a line up five inches on each side, allowing me to complete the wind brace. Again, I'll erase a few things I don't need. I can get rid of some of the infill. Last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and do a 24 by 24 rectangle here to start my wind brace. Um, that length, by the way, ends up being 33 and 15 sixteenths if you use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to cut a curved brace out of um, 3 by 6 stock. So I need six inches there. And if I zoom in, I want to come down six inches and over six inches to trim knee braces. And finally, I want to curve them starting at that intersection, going to that intersection, and curving it in about halfway. That looks pretty good right about there. Again, erasing what I don't need. All right. So I'm going to double click on that brace in order to highlight the whole thing and hit Command C to copy it. Pull out a little bit over here, Command-V, move my cursor around to paste it, and I'm going to go ahead and push-pull that three inches in order to create the three-dimensional brace, and I am going to highlight the whole thing and use my component tool to turn that into a component, calling it brace. That way I can use this tool in various different places. I'm going to go ahead and add a line here to separate my rafters. And I will use the push-pull tool. Using Option, I will pull them towards me 8 inches. And if I just come in, if I come to the line, it should snap to 8 inches, or I can type in 8 inches each time. Now these, this uh, king post, I want to push-pull only seven inches because I'm going to center that. And the wind braces, I'm going to push-pull, um, if they're three, I want to push-pull them 5.5 inches. I'll do the same thing with this. 5.5 return because I want to go around to the back side. Now, if when you go around to the back, you do not have a back to all of these, it's because you didn't use the option command when you push pulled. Now, it's very easy to go ahead and fix that from the back. Option, push pull, 
hover over a line and it'll snap into place. Option, push, pull. So you hover over a line, it snaps into place. Just like I've got to do the others as well. Option, push, pull till it snaps. Option, push, pull. You have to hit the option key every single time. All right, now, in order to center this king post, I want to push pull that back again one inch, and I need to push pull these uh, 2.5 inches in order to center them. 2.5, and I need to push pull that forward 2.5 in order to center it, and that should center all of those posts. And it's up to you if you want to go in and get rid of some of these lines. Sometimes I find them helpful because they give me um, intersection points that I can use later on for measuring. So for instance, if I leave this line here and I want to measure or I want to put a uh, um, dimension line on there, it gives me a point in the same line and I can say 24 inches. So I recommend that you leave those there for now. Last but not least, here I have my brace made into a component. Um, if I copy and paste that over here, and then I can look at it straight down, and using my rotate tool on a straight edge, I can rotate that all the way around 180 degrees. If I hit Command 3 to look at things straight on again, I should be able to move it. If I grab that point, stick it on there, and then go straight up, a little rotation will help here. I want to move it over to the middle. So if it's on an edge now, I want to take this outside corner and move it over 2.5 inches, and that should center it. Let's just make sure that we are, in fact, I'm going to grab it by this corner. See, we're not quite touching there, so I'm going to grab it by, I guess I can't. I'm going to grab it right there and go straight up. I'm going to grab it right here and go straight up until it's touching on the face. There we go. Command 3, zoom extents in your large tool palette to get it centered. And I have completed one bend. Now I haven't put any um, markings in as to where your purlins are going to go. We'll figure that out in another video. I think this is a good place to take a break. Um, I'll throw just a couple of dimensions on just to show you. I've got my nine feet there. I've got my 12 feet there. And I should have, if I check it with um, a little trigonometry and my protractor, this angle right here from the horizontal should be 33.7 degrees. Yes. And we'll pick up here in the next video.